Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Keystroke Live. I'm Jay Rastuccia, and uh, today we're going to uh, discuss importing data in Keystroke. Um, the importer module is a, uh, uh, a component of the uh, Keystroke Advanced POS software. Uh, users licensed for advanced have access to importer. Uh, dealers also, of course, have access to the importer in their dealer bundle as well. Um, few brief notes on uh, Keystroke Live uh, before we begin. Uh, Keystroke Live is held every Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, you can use the same login information. Uh, and Each week we're going to discuss uh, uh, technical uh, um, issues related to the Keystroke Point of Sale software. Uh, the first Thursday of each month uh, will be hosted by uh, SBS President Michael Gebb. <clears throat> So, a few brief notes on, uh, on importing. Um, uh, we can import records into any keystroke database, um, inventory, customers, vendors, clerks, etc. Um, uh, our importer uses uh, text files in an ASCII delimited format. This would uh, commonly be, or the, the files that uh, we can import from include uh, comma delimited files. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, the file extension of CSV as in comma separated value. Uh, we can import using uh, quote comma delimited files. We can also use tab delimited files. Uh, our importer settings can be saved for uh, frequent or routine uh, Muted. Unmuted. Um, someone just muted me. I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, we can uh, we can save our importer settings, which is going to allow us to uh, to frequently reuse those same settings. This is very commonly used. Uh, for things like cost or price updates, where uh, uh, you may receive a or a user may receive a uh, a spreadsheet from their vendors indicating their uh, or including new cost increases and so forth. Uh, if this is something that occurs regularly, we can configure the importer to uh, retain the same settings so that uh, uh, essentially all we have to do is run the import uh, process when a, a new uh, cost list is received. Um, <clears throat> we can also, uh, to that uh, to that regard, we can also automate importing uh, by using uh, our um, executable for uh, the import, the KS import uh, .exe. <clears throat> I'm going to jump over to uh, to Keystroke, and we're just going to to go right into uh, the the whole process of importing. As I had mentioned, um, <clears throat> we can import from uh, a delimited files, so I'm actually going to go through uh, creating such a file along with you and uh, give demonstration of, of how we're going to import. Okay, so I'm going to go to my database manager. Here I just have our standard sample data, uh, the data that resides in our tutor directory. We have a, um, our inventory, the inventory that we include in the sample data. Um, you see I have our, our customers as well. We have a list of our customers, our inventory. Well, I've gone ahead and I have created another set of data, a blank, initialized, completely blank data as if uh, uh, this were a new installation. And um, I, I want to import some data into that uh, data set. Uh, so first, I'm going to, I want to use this data that exists in our, our sample data. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to create a, 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 a delimited file here. So, and this can be done through the keystroke export in our configuration manager, just data, in this case, I'm going to be exporting databases. I'm going to start with inventory. And I'm going to sort by stock number. 
And in this case, in our instance, in my example, I'm going to uh, export to a quote comma delimited file. We'll start with that. And uh, the export's uh, very straightforward here. I'm not going to plot to apply a start or end string that would uh, limit the, uh, the export. I'm not going to apply a filter, uh, nor will I include hidden records, uh, header uh, records or field titles, or non-importable fields. So I'm going to just name my export file inventory items .txt. All right. So I've exported to a, a delimited file. Let's take a look at this file briefly. <clears throat> okay. So I'm viewing the uh, the delimited file that I just created here. This is the uh, the data that I'm going to uh, to be importing into a new data set. Uh, you'll see that uh, that we have a, a st our data fields um, within quotes separated by commas. Um, keystroke is going to uh, to recognize that the data within quotes. Uh, are, is the data to be imported into each data field, and that each data field or that each field is separated with a comma? Um, so, in our uh, example here, we have um, just stock number, product code, department, description. Uh, then we get into the prices and the costs. So here is our basic file. Uh, again, this is a quote comma file. Although the importer will allow you to import from uh, simply a comma delimited file or a tab delimited file. Um, delimited files, uh, in our case, we, I created this file uh, from our export. However, uh, a user may receive their import files uh, uh, commonly in a, a spreadsheet format, such as an XLS file, an Excel file. Um, Excel will allow uh, the, uh, the file to be saved as a CSV file, as a comma separated file, as a quote comma delimited file. Um, I believe there are also means that you could um, assign the tab as the delimiter for your delimited file. So um, bottom line, as long as you can open your, uh, your import file in a, a spreadsheet format like Excel, um, you'll usually have the, the ability to save the file as, in a delimited format, and uh, as long as we can do that, we can import it into Keystroke. So here we see I have my uh, delimited file. That's all I need. So Okay, now I've, uh, as I mentioned, I've created a uh, uh, or initialized a new blank data set. So I'm going to go over to my database manager. I go to inventory, go to edit, and right away we see that Keystroke wants to initialize a new inventory record, meaning there are no records in this database. I'm going to uh, to import some records. We're going over to I'm going to go over to uh, uh, custom to retrieve our uh, list of custom modules, and we'll see importer is listed. Um, takes us into import. We're going to start under the setup menu in uh, the importer and go to inventory. All right, uh, you're going to see that the first parameter we show listed here is uh, uh, is our setup file. This setup file retains the settings to be used by the importer. Okay, um, it's defaulting to KS import. I'm actually going to create a new settings file, a new setup file, just for the purposes of demonstration, demonstration here. And I'm going to call it demo. So this is a blank settings file. No parameters have, have been uh, configured beyond the defaults. Um, so starting with a fresh setup file, 
our next uh, parameter here is the import file, the file that contains the data to be imported, our delimited file. Um, I created a file in, that resides in our keystroke directory, and uh, which is the uh, the default location uh, for this setting as well. You could use an, uh, you can include a complete path uh, to your file, but I know it's in the keystroke directory. I know I named it inv items dot txt. So that's all that I'm going to need to specify here is uh, our import file of uh, inv items dot txt. Now field position and file is where we are going to uh, specify the location of a given data field in the, uh, the import file. Okay, now I happened to create uh, this file right from the keystroke export, so everything on this list is in fact in numerical order. Uh, I know that the stock number is the first field. I know that the product code is the second field and department is the third. Uh, for argument's sake, we could say that uh, product code was our first field in the import file. We could say that description was the second field. We could say that base price was the third field and department was the fourth field and so on. Again, I know that uh, uh, all of these fields are in completely sequential order because they were the file was created by our keystroke export. Um, we have a, a little shortcut to assign these fields in numerical order. Uh, again, you could assign each field manually based upon the field's location in your import file. Uh, I'm going to take a quick shortcut here and use Shift F8 to automatically number all fields sequentially. All right, so here we see from top to bottom, you know, I am in sequential order, which agrees with the, uh, the format of the, uh, uh, the export file created by Keystroke. Um, so again, we assign our import file, we assign the position of the data fields in that file. Uh, we then find uh, in the, uh, the lower uh, left area, we have uh, settings for first record and last record. This will specify to the importer uh, which, uh, um, which records to import from your import file. Uh, first record meaning the first, uh, the, the first line that you want the importer to begin importing from. Uh, in our case, um, our, uh, our import file is about 129 lines. If I only wanted to import uh, lines from, let's say, 50 to 60, I could set my first record to 50, and the importer would begin on line 50 of the, uh, the import file. If I said last record to 60, it would end at, uh, at line 60, importing just records from between those lines. Uh, zero. Uh, for first record and last record represents the entire import file. Uh, <clears throat> so by leaving first record and last record as zero, this will import every line in your import file. Um, very commonly, a user will have a uh, will have uh, uh, field headings. You know, a, a field to identify what each field is. That will often be the very first line and you're not going to want to import that that first line you, there's no need to import the uh, the field headings it's not an actual inventory record um so in in such a scenario we would assign a uh, a first record um usually line 2 okay but in our case again we know that uh, the import file is uh, um a straight list of of inventory items so we'll leave first record last record at 0 we show a merge by function here on the, the right hand side. Okay, this allows, the merge by function will allow the importer to update existing inventory records. Okay, we see that uh, our merge by function lists our uh, indexed fields, the, uh, the index fields of the inventory database, the description, the product code, uh, stock number, class, manufacturer, and alternate ID. The merge by parameter, I'm going to set it to product code. Uh, this is going to uh, uh, configure the importer so that uh, it is 
going to attempt to match the product code that is assigned in the, uh, the setup here to existing product codes in your inventory database. Uh, we see that uh, code is, uh, is assigned as uh, field 2. Okay, this is telling the importer that uh, uh, to search for existing inventory records or, or try to match field 2, the product code, to existing inventory items. And what keystroke will do from there depends on, on the following settings here, the add new items and the don't merge existing items. Add new items will do exactly that. Uh, this will add items to the, uh, the inventory database if they do not exist. <clears throat> the don't merge existing items will prevent the updating of items that already exist based on our merge parameters here. Again, uh, we're, certain we're merging by product code. Keystroke will uh, check the product code field um, uh, and, and match uh, uh, or, or compare to uh, uh, what already exists in the inventory database. Um, <clears throat> don't, again, don't merge existing items will prevent the importer from uh, updating those records that already exist. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we do see also in the merge by um, we have a which we have set to product code. We also have also search alternate codes. So this will also, it just adds another, another layer to how Keystroke will identify existing items. Um, it will just include uh, the, uh, the alternate codes that are assigned on inventory items. Uh, for our demonstration here, it's certainly not relevant. Add new items, however, is quite relevant to our purposes because, again, we're starting with a completely blank inventory database. We want to import everything from our import file. So, again, we've assigned our setup file, the file that holds all of the settings that will be used, uh, the import file, the file that contains all of the data to be imported. We've specified the, uh, the field, position in, field positions in the import file, and uh, we will be importing all records. So first record, last record are both set to zero. Uh, Unhide updated records. This will be enabled uh, usually by default, and it does exactly that. If uh, uh, an existing item is updated from this import and it is currently hidden, it will be marked as, uh, it, it, will, uh, it will be unhidden. Uh, the update last edit date is strictly a, uh, a user preference, and it is fairly self-explanatory. It updates the last edit date that is stamped on the inventory record. So we've assigned all of our parameters here, and when we select OK, nothing has yet happened. All we have done is, is set the parameters to be used for our import. Um, to actually run the import function, we're going to our uh, import menu, and again, we're importing inventory, so inventory is our choice. You'll see we have three options here, merge, append, and replace. Uh, by far, the merge option is going to be most common. Merge will merge your, uh, uh, your import file into your existing inventory database. Uh, this, include, this, this means updating existing records and adding new records. Append will add, strictly add to the inventory database. It is used for adding items, not necessarily um, updating existing items. Replace, you're going to find, is, is the least commonly used uh, function. Uh, it, it does exactly that. It replaces the entire inventory database. Now, before we proceed with importing, it is always strongly recommended that a current backup has been made. An import cannot be undone. Okay, so it is important that we, uh, we have a current backup. This data, I'm unconcerned with a backup because it is simply a blank data set. I, I stand no chance of, of losing any additional items, there are uh, uh, any items, uh, because there are no existing items. So I'll go ahead and proceed with uh, inventory and, uh, and the merge. Okay, and again, we're prompted to uh, import the data from our, uh, 
uh, uh, into uh, from our import file into the inventory database. I'm going to select OK. We'll see the status along the, uh, the bottom of the screen indicating that keystroke is working. Now it's already completed very rapidly. Um, <clears throat> so that's interesting that I see uh, 129 records read, 85 records added, 44 records updated. I'm not sure why that's coming up. We don't have any existing records in here. I wonder what that is uh, referring to, but we're going to go and take a quick look right over to database and there I see all of my inventory items. I'm going to sort these by stock number here. There we see there's my list of items. Okay so we've gone from a blank database to a, uh, a complete data set now using our uh, delimited file this can be done, again, for any database. <clears throat> In this data set, again, I have no customers. Uh, we see that as soon as I go to our customer database, we're at uh, number one, indicating no existing customer records. Uh, the same could be done. Um, all data fields will take a, just a quick look at the setup, uh, again, in the importer. We'll go to the setup menu and select customers. You'll see this is virtually identical. Um, the only difference that you will see in the customer setup is the name of the, the data fields. Here we will just uh, we will use the exact same process using an import file where we, we would specify the location of each data field in our import file. Uh, say last name is your first field, then it will of course be marked as the, the as one. Uh, first name is your second, of course it is marked as two and so on. So this is a, a fairly straightforward process here. It's, uh, we, we try not to complicate it. Um, uh, bottom line, as long as we can get, your, get the data in a delimited file, we can get it, we can import it into Keystroke uh, fairly easily from our importer here. Um, uh, I'm sure most of you have worked with uh, with the importer to uh, uh, to some degree. Uh, those of you that haven't will find that uh, uh, the necessity will arise, um, be it for your inventory, which I'd say is fairly common, um, particularly with new installations uh, or installations where uh, the user is switching from a uh, uh, a previous uh, point of sale system. Uh, as long as we can get their data in a delimited file, we can get it into the Keystroke program. Um, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody may have here. Uh, let's see if I can... I'll go ahead and unmute uh, everyone here, and uh, if anyone has any questions, um, now's the time to, uh, to address them. Of course, you can always contact us here at, uh, at Tech Support, and we are happy to, uh, uh, to, to provide assistance here with importing. Uh, it's something that we do on a daily basis here. Um, uh, was anything unclear that I had uh, identified um, uh, in our import process? Well, I'm not hearing any uh, any questions at this time, so I'm uh, going to assume that that means everything was clear and uh, everyone understood our uh, uh, our simple import uh, procedures here. Uh, again, uh, if anyone does okay. have questions, yes. Yes. Here we, Hello. There we go. Okay. Go ahead. And um, uh, uh, was that Gordon that? Uh, that was asking yeah, a question? Someone, someone had a question, but they were being quiet. I do. Okay, and... Uh, yeah, we can use that, Tammy, or...? This is Annie. Annie, okay. It just comes up that I'm too certain that I can get it come up as Annie. But um, I have a question. Earlier, when you were talking about exporting um, files, export database, and you choose your file, yes. and you have the um, different types of... If a customer just wants to bring over certain data, 
Sure. Um, can they apply the filters that you had? Absolutely, absolutely. And, so. And how many filters can they use when bringing over data? Like males, twenty-four through. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good question have. because it uh, uh, this really depends on on your criteria. So here I'm going right back to uh, our export function under our files menu to export. In this case, I'm going to go to databases. All right, and uh, let's go to inventory. Now, when you go to inventory, your next menu determines the, uh, the, the way that your export file will be sorted by one of the six uh, indexed fields. Description, product code, stock number, class, manufacturer, alternate ID. When we go to one of these indexed fields, we then select the, uh, the format, again, quote, comma, tab, it's inconsequential for your question here, but this start and end string is uh, is pertinent information. Um, the start and end string pertains directly to the indexed field that we have chosen. I believe I use stock number again here. The start string will determine what stock number to start with. Likewise, if I had chosen the description as the sorted field, uh, the start string would uh, would pertain to the uh, the description, so I could start with a start string of let's say G and an end string of M, and this will export just items with a description from G to M. Okay, and again, we do have the filter that allows us to go a little bit further. Uh, the export filter. Uh, allows for uh, just two conditions, okay, where we can filter on uh, any uh, any inventory database criteria, okay, and uh, assign the conditions such as, um, let's say category contains A, B, C, and it's got a cost of, um, well, let's say, or let's say tax code of T for taxable, for argument's sake. Okay, so we can apply two filters in the export, uh, but we can also use a range, a start string and an end string for the export. So that is uh, something that we can uh, accommodate. We can accommodate the limiting of the, uh, the export from our, our data. And um, did anyone else uh, have any questions either on... Uh, uh, our exporter, rather, uh, on the, uh, the import function. Hi, Jay. This is Alan from A and B. Oh, hi, Alan. Hey, uh, thanks for your help yesterday, by the oh, way. Oh, sure, sure, my pleasure. Okay. Um, I got a question here on uh, your. You say it's comma separated and quotes. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. I if I have a description that says uh, red candle or red comma candle as the right. description, right? The quote the quotes will take care of the. That's the right. Report. In this case, okay. if you have a description, and and in fact, our help file goes into uh, into some detail here. If I want to go right back to my importer. And let's go to setup and inventory again. And uh, I'm going to go into our uh, our help file here. Let me uh, let me see if I can share that screen. And sure. Okay. So I've pulled up our our help file for the uh, the importer setup. And uh, I'm going to go to the, uh, the segment on the, uh, the import file itself. And it details that it is a, uh, it should be in an ASCII comma delimited format. Um, and of course, you can use quote comma or tab delimited. Um, and here, this screen um, gives us a nice example. Um, again, for what you have described, Alan, where uh, the description will contain a comma, then you are going to need to use a quote comma delimited file and here at the bottom of the screen we see a good example here where uh, were the uh, the file only comma delimited well we see paper comma copier grade comma three comma four ninety nine well that would be one two three four separate fields 
given that there is a comma between paper and copier. Now, when we use a quote comma delimited file, we see that the uh, the description paper com uh, paper comma copier grade is within quotes. That's going to identify that to the importer that that is one data field. Then there's a, a comma separator, and the next data field is again in quotes. So this will allow data fields to contain quotes by using a quote comma delimited file. So that's a great question, and it is sure to arise. Uh, when that does come up, you'll need to recognize that, uh, yes, your import file needs to be in a, uh, a quote comma format. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, I would like to, uh, to thank everyone for attending. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, I'm Jay Rastuccia. For those, that, uh, those of you that uh, I may not have spoken to yet, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, again, any questions that, uh, that do come up um, uh, regarding importing, feel free to give us a call at, uh, at Tech Support, and we're, uh, we're happy to assist. Uh, next week uh, will be the, uh, the first Thursday of the month, and uh, Keystroke Live will be hosted by, uh, by Michael Gebb. Uh, again, thanks Great for attending. Great presentation, Jake. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Nick, and uh, uh, thanks for attending, and everyone have a great day.